Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'd like to speak to the quote, silver bullet or inhaled corticosteroids for COVID-19. Dr. Richard Bartlett, a physician in Odessa, Texas, has recently gotten a lot of press about using budesonide or inhaled corticosteroids for early COVID-19 symptoms. I'd like to talk to y'all about why he thinks that is a beneficial treatment and about some of the data behind it and ways to move forward. One interesting aspect about COVID-19 is that we would expect asthmatic patients to have worse outcomes with COVID-19. We've seen with other viral illnesses that asthmatics often suffer greatly because viruses tend to exacerbate someone's asthma or it can increase their risk for pneumonia. But with COVID-19, we're simply not seeing that with asthmatics. We've seen so far from data from New York City that asthma is not even in the top 10 comorbidities for COVID-19, even though about 10% of New York City is thought to have asthma. We've also seen data from China that says even though 5% of the population has asthma, only about 1% of patients with asthma have been hospitalized for COVID-19. Furthermore, we've also seen studies that have shown ACE2 expression may be decreased in patients with allergies and allergic asthma, and therefore may help these patients to be less vulnerable to SARS-CoV-2 or the virus that causes COVID-19, since the ACE2 receptors are the pathway in which the virus gets into the lungs and the respiratory system. Furthermore, as I've mentioned previously in another video, the recovery trial showed the great benefit of IV dexamethasone or an IV steroid in patients with severe COVID-19 symptoms. Patients that were on a ventilator or receiving oxygen had a mortality benefit when they received IV steroids. And lastly, in vitro or scientific studies, meaning not on humans, pre-treatment with budesonide or the steroid that I mentioned in combination with other meds was shown to reduce coronavirus replication. We also know that in patients with asthma, about 20 to 60% of them use some form of inhaled corticosteroid. So the theory is what if inhaled corticosteroids are protective? What if inhaled corticosteroids can use to help prevent progression to severe COVID-19 symptoms? I do think there is some legitimacy in continuing to study this theory. We know that IV dexamethasone is helpful for patients with severe COVID-19 symptoms, but we don't have much currently for patients with early symptoms of COVID-19. And I think this would be such a great benefit to patients if this proves to be helpful. As I mentioned previously, Dr. Richard Bartlett has had personal success using inhaled budesonide also known as Palmacort. The great thing about this medication is that it's cheap and readily available and is able to be used outside of the hospital. We don't have any treatments so far for COVID-19 that are easily available and readily used outside the hospital. But I do need to stress that no randomized controlled trials have been done with inhaled budesonide. Everything that we know is very subjective. It's case studies and case reports and someone just saying that when they've used it on their patients, it's been shown to be beneficial. I do know that randomized control trials are currently underway and we're anxiously awaiting those results. However, as with anything, there are cons to possibly using inhaled budesonide. We do know that if you use steroids for a long period of time, it can increase your risk for cataracts, osteoporosis, and diabetes. And in the short term, it can increase your risk for thrush which is a fungus inside the mouth, although this can be easily prevented by rinsing your mouth out after use. And those other side effects are usually seen with long-term use, and I'm just talking about a very short course of inhaled budesonide. But as I mentioned previously, at the end of the day, we just simply don't know if this is helpful for early COVID-19 symptoms. We don't know if this is helpful to prevent progression into more severe symptoms but I do think the data behind it is promising, and I'm happy to see that Dr. Bartlett has had success with this medication. But I'm unable to give you the treatment protocol. We just don't know the dose and for how long it needs to be used. We don't know whether nebulized form or an inhaled form is better. And currently, if you have asthma and you're on an inhaled corticosteroid, such as fluticasone, 
mometazone, beclomethazone, or budesonide, do not stop your inhaled steroid. There is a possibility that it could be protective. So continue this medication. And we certainly don't want to have you stop the medication and then have an asthma exacerbation. I do hope that inhaled budesonide is shown to be helpful to prevent progression of worsening symptoms of COVID-19. We'll just have to wait and see. Thanks again for joining me.